Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. My name is Aaron Blake, and I was just reading the political dictionary. Today's word is Hastert rule. The funny thing about the Hastert rule is that it's not really a rule at all. It was never a rule to begin with. My intention is to always pass bills with strong Republican support. It's more of an informal tactic used in the House that lets the majority party limit the minority party from bringing votes to the floor. If the Speaker of the House decides to follow the Hastert rule, he or she will not bring up any bill that doesn't have support from a majority of the majority, that is, support from more than half of his or her party. The rule gives speakers an excuse not to vote on controversial bills that pass in the Senate. Now I know what you're thinking. Why in the world is it called the Hastert rule? Well, the Hastert rule gets its name from Republican Representative Dennis Hastert. He was the longest serving GOP Speaker of the House and held the gavel from 1999 to 2007. The basic premise actually predates Hastert, and today he distances himself from the rule that bears his own name. He recently told reporters, quote, that was a misnomer at a press conference, and the press blew that up as the Hastert rule. The Hastert rule really was, if you don't have 218 votes, you didn't bring the bill to the floor. There is no Hastert rule. While the tactic is commonly associated with the GOP, it's no stranger across the aisle. Hastert's successor, Democratic Speaker Nancy Pelosi, violated the rule seven times during her four years as Speaker. The House will come to order. In the current Congress, the Hastert rule has repeatedly been cited as the reason House Speaker John Boehner will not allow a vote to reopen the government. It's the main reason why we have as much gridlock as we do today, which lands the Hastert rule a permanent spot in our political dictionary.